Hello, welcome to the Lately in PHP podcast. Finally, after many attempts to to deal with the challenges of recording this monthly podcast that never goes out when we schedule it, but I think this finally it is going to be live. Uh, this time I have here with me Cesar Rodas. Hello, Cesar. How are you doing? Hello, I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? I'm being very patient because uh, after all the failures to record, uh, it's <laughs> one more try. Uh, and uh, this time uh, Nanny could not make it, uh, but uh, okay, maybe next month we can make it. Yeah, it's always next a year, challenge. To, uh, I think so. I think this <laughs> year is probably the last. Anyway, yeah. at this time we, we have several interesting topics to comment, uh, so we better get started uh, soon because um, we need to um, to move on very quickly so it doesn't take longer than usual. And uh, this month uh, we start uh, as usual by uh, by the usual coverage of the releases at PHP. This time there was PHP 5.5.6, but uh, although there is another release more recent, um, because we are already recording this too late, but uh, looking at this list of changes, uh, it's mostly bug fixes. Uh, I did not see anything any change of behavior, any improvement. I don't know how I haven't been trying this much. And there was also a release of 5.4.22, which is more or less the same set of bugs that were fixed. Uh, Cesar, are you keeping up with the, the updates uh, that of uh, the versions of PHP that uh, are coming out? Uh, let me see right now in my computer. Uh, I have, uh, like, I upgraded all my packages like three days ago. Now it says that I have PHP 5.5.6, and it's not the latest one. The latest one has been released yesterday, which is the 5.7. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, like, before that, I was working with the last uh, release from PHP 5.4. And then my operating system it just decided to switch to five dot dot five, and right. personally I didn't have to change anything in any projects. And I have like many many projects working here in, on my local host. Everything right. just works fine. I had to recompile a couple of extensions though. I believe that should be out automatic at some point. But right. other than that, everything was fine. Yes. So, you are you compiling manually, or are you using some distribution I'm, prepackaged versions? Uh, for PHP itself, I used to compile that, but uh, it's too much hassle just for my yeah. local host because I need to just go to Apache and reconfigure it. So I stopped doing that. I do that for my production servers though. Um, but uh, I have a couple of extensions that I install via Pickle, like Xdebug and MongoDB, the Mongo yeah. client. So uh, those three classes, I had to reinstall it. But other right. than that, everything was just fine. So you, for your development environment, you use uh, Apache, or you are using the built-in uh, HTTP server? Uh, the built-in HTTP server, I didn't play with it. I started a couple of times. It's very, very useful. I might start using it, but I got to, but I got used to what I have, which is Apache, right. and I don't know what what version, but uh, uh, the latest one, I guess, two point something. And I have to go for every new idea that they have, and I need to create a virtual host. That is really annoying. So I might. Start doing uh, using the the built-in server. Actually, I see here in the change list of the 5.5.7 that they added two functions. Uh, the first is get all headers, um, 
and the Apache uh, response header. So those two functions they were apparently missing because those functions they are they are just a thin layer over the SAP uh, module. So it is in, it is a different a different implementation for each web server. So they they make it look con consistent now. So that is really good. And I forgot to mention that for my production servers, I use Fast CGI and Nginx, uh, yeah. with, and works just just fine. Like literally, I don't have like what I have on my virtual on my laptop. I push it to to production and works. Like that right. is one. So you really do. Cool. So are you using PHP 5.5 or not yet on production? Uh, on pro on production no, but just because I'm lazy. But I will I might do that at some point. I'm yeah. with five dot four and in the light and in the latest version uh, that was released. I don't know two or three months ago. So now it is not the latest version. Yeah. Well, maybe you should try it five point five in a development environment for a while before you decide to move on because you may stumble into issues that may break in production. It's probably uh, I don't know yeah. what you what is whatever is are you running in production. I don't know if it is important or just some test side. Uh, my personal projects they are not important. So but at work I believe we are using an old version 5.3. So most of my libraries that I want to yeah. use at work, they don't they don't work because I love one of the new features of PHP, which is the short syntax array. So I use it everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, so, so whoever so runs for, old code. Yeah, for that tiny change, I, I it doesn't work on any other version than PHP 5.4. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, anyway, uh, moving on with the, the podcast, uh, let's just cover a bit uh, about uh, the latest proposals. And before we actually move on to the proposals themselves, uh, let me just mention there is now a to-do list page for PHP 5.6, actually. And um, uh, it also, it already mentions... Uh, let me increase the font here. Uh, what is the planned uh, timetable for for this um, the this new PHP version? So, according to this timetable, the first uh, alpha release will be uh, about uh, in, in about one month uh, in January. Um, so for now they they are mentioned that there are no new RFCs, no new features, and um, well for the beta which is planned for March, and if all goes well in June they plan to release uh, 5.6 and keep up with uh, the plan to have at least one uh, major upgrade. Well, not really major, medium. It's not minor, it's not major, it's medium upgrade um, uh, every year. Uh, about the planned uh, f features, there are some RFCs that most of them, they already talked about them, not going to cover them a year again, but it's always interesting for those that were not aware to come here and uh, talk about them. As for new proposals, let's move on here. Uh, lately, there, there have been some discussions about, uh, for instance, what they call expectations, which is basically to to have a certain conditions to throw um, uh, exceptions instead of uh, uh, issue some fatal error. Uh, this is a bit odd because, well, if you want to throw ac exceptions, you might as well write a condition, uh, if statement, and then throw the exceptions in yourself. I don't know if this would really need to have a proposal for a new feature. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, uh, Cesar? 
do you, do you see a uh, useful I, feature? Uh, I don't really like. I don't. I am waiting to the introduction uh, once again, and the uh, ah. So what they are basically what's different is that they said uh, uh, that this will uh, be like in your production server you will disable it. So uh, like uh, when you are like doing your 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 real web pages, like you want. You wouldn't test things, so so that exception that will be no. gone basically. So, uh, you, but you, yeah, it could be useful. I mean, but so. if like if I would have to vote for 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 this feature for this feature, I would probably say future because it could be useful, but is is not needed. Like, if we won't make of PHP a more beautiful language. It, it Yet another thing that we have to uh, learn. So, yeah. but it has good intentions, as far as I can tell. Well, I, this for me this, this is all a sign that um, PHP is already such a perfect language that the, all the new proposals seem to be things that you probably will not really need that much. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is that uh, uh, I believe that many people are coming from other languages where they can play like with a couple of syntax sugar on top of their language, and they can make it look sort of like they are doing something else. And because they can't do this with with PHP, which is something brilliant, because that is what made a Facebook the that what gave Facebook the possibility to just implement a a new P, PHP implementation which runs faster which runs in the machine code uh, so they are proposing all these things if I could vote and I can vote I would say no so I will yeah. I will just wait until they they can call for 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 votes if they ever reach that stage, and I will probably vote no. Yeah, but are you a voter? I, I'm, I'm uh, not sure. I could vote. Yes, uh, I, I could vote because I contribute with a pickle extension long yeah. time ago. But so, do you usually do vote on proposals or just the ones that annoy you? Uh, I vote on on proposals that I believe that they are gonna make. PHP a better place. So in this whole time of 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 RFC or RFC that I believe is it's it's great uh, the possibility that anyone could just contribute. I vote like three times and two ones two times were for a yes and one was for a no. I don't remember. It was yeah. mm, like six months ago probably. Did it make a difference for you? I mean, did your vote uh, change anything, or just? Uh... Um, no, no. Like m most people were 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 voting about the same thing, so uh, it didn't make a difference. But they are they aren't many votes though. Like last time I checked, was like for twenty votes, thirty votes for for the most controversial. Controversial things, uh, but, but yes, I just vote when whenever I can see that that something could make PHP better or could just make it just no. a horrible thing. I vote no. <laughs> okay, well, moving on to the next topic. Actually, there was a topic that we are going to jump because we already covered in the past. I remember now. And then now I'm going to comment about the power operator, which is basically a, uh, a proposal to have two asterisks to, um, as a, an operator that uh, represents the power uh, operation. You take a number and take it to the power of another number. Uh, so basically this is synthetic sugar. You can have... Uh, the power operator 
turned into a call to the power function. And I think this, uh, they mention here also GMP overloading, which means that uh, if you are using arbitrary and precision numbers, it will eventually return an arbitrary and precision result, which is good for whoever needs to make calculations without losing precision. Uh, yeah, I, I for for this feature I might vote yes. And the reason being is that uh, there is a tiny difference between a a compiler construction and one function call. So when when you call a function in PHP, there is a, a tiny overhead, but so tiny that you cannot just um, even measure it. But when you call that function, say I'm calculating something, and I'm called the same function like a million times, that does make a difference. So, uh, and when you are using like mathematic things, that overhead it doesn't exist. So, so uh, this feature I kind of like it. So. Yeah. So do you, do you think there will be a noticeable speed improvement if we have many calls to the power power function? When you use uh, a, a, an operator like this, uh, or probably not, will not be very noticeable. Uh, you like m many people, they wouldn't even care. Like m myself, I didn't even care un until in a project I was calling a function that was. A uh, ray something that was just take a portion of of one of of one vector, and um, and uh, and it was for one IE things. I was just classifying text, so I call that functions literally in my test suites like a million times, but literally a million times. So. And I and the whole program it was taking like six seconds, which isn't that much. But then I thought, what happens if I if instead of just calling this function, which is a native function, which I expect to be fast, that was really fast. What happens if I just replace it with with a for each loop until I need it, and then I break it, and my program. It was from six seconds to one second, so there was a lot of improvements. But that right. is a very, very special case. So that you you wouldn't measure that thing if you are just doing websites, like it's not possible. Yeah. Well, um, let's see if this is actually you will make uh, any noticeable difference when it is released. Uh, <laughs> For now, we're now going to move on to another new proposal, which is actually something that has already been developed, but it, a proposal for a new PHP debugger called PHP DBG. And basically, this uh, proposes to implement this uh, PHP DBG as uh, a SAPI module. Uh, so instead of interfacing with with uh, with a web server or CLI, it will probably just be a debug version of that. So it will be connecting to debug to the debugger. And uh, well, uh, here is the page of the proposal, and there is also the website for for this debugger. And uh, I, I don't know, uh, uh, Cesar, have you tried this uh, debugger already, or just at least look at no. the pages? No, it looks like GDB. I don't know if they share any code, but but looks like it. Uh, no, uh, I never use any debugger, not, not because I don't need it. I need it, but... Uh, uh, they are just too complex to my tiny little head, so I don't use them. I just use, I use Xdebug though. Like I like how how it change how Vardam looks and how my exception, how it shows how it brings me so much information so I can just fix things quickly. Um, 
I never use a debugger. I believe this could be good to somebody, but not me. That doesn't mean that this is that this is wrong. It does. It means that I might never use it. Uh, and I was in a podcast last Saturday, and one of the topics was all about how to make xdebug a real-time debugger with some IDE that I don't remember. It was one of these in Java? I believe it was Eclipse or mm-hmm. or the other one. I don't remember, but. Uh, like basically, with some configurations that are really simple, you could just uh, do like how you debug JavaScript uh, from from uh, Chrome. Like you, yeah. so you can tell it just open me this web page and stop here. So PHP will actually do that. So you Google can just jump to to your IDE and say, okay, just show me all the variables, values, just jump or just post there. It was really cool. I never use it though, so. And this thing seems that, but for 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 another kind of people, like for more smarter people. And certainly, I, I don't fit there, so <laughs> I won't use it, but seems cool. Well, uh, this is a, actually this is a bit confusing because it says that it would work as a SAPI extension, but at the same time it says that it's a SAPI agnostic. Would it be possible to have multiple SAPIs on one PHP environment? Uh, I think so. I think what what they're trying to say is, and I and I say I might be wrong. I I will be wrong. So what I believe is that they will just bundle it into a, a into an extension. So so you can use all their utilities and all their debug functions from from Apache or from any other web server. And also they it will come with with their own interface, which looks pretty much like like the like the GDB, so that's why I understand, but that might be wrong. So yeah. Uh, all although I don't know who are maintaining these projects, but I have to say these things are really complex machine code. So it's really complex. I saw the source code of of Xdebug, and all the sort of chart magic that that are happening there are just amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, uh, let's see how this goes because so far I'm not sure if there is a real need for uh, yet another debugger, but I think it won't hurt either. Uh, so uh, well, let's um, see how this goes. We are voting already, so even if I vote now, it makes no difference. Uh, there are 34 votes for yes and zero for for no. So I believe that 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 A will come bundled in the next PHP versions. Uh, actually, all the yeah, it's, it has been approved for by everybody. So uh, yeah, so E will be there. Oh, how useful this will become. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, now moving on to yet another uh, feature. Actually, we are going to go back because last month we had uh, two, two guests that came to talk about security. And so the, that episode is just about security features. So there are some features not related to security that were left behind. Uh, but I think they are somehow important. One of them is about automatic property initialization. Let me share the screen here. And this, what this means in practice is that uh, uh, when you call and you create an object, you can pass to the constructor variables that to values for variables that will be automatically initialized when the object is created. 
Well, I think this is interesting. This is useful. That probably will save you some keystrokes. I don't know if it is really something necessary, but it seems uh, useful. What do you think, sir? Uh, I'm looking at both proposals. I'm gonna. I believe that. I believe that the second one, which is the constructive promotion, it's rather confusing. It will bring so much confusion. Yeah. Like, uh, it changes how if a pro how a method is defined, and when you are looking at a method, you because people follow certain uh, standards always. Like properties are defined first. So uh, when you are looking into one class to see how many properties are defined, you have to uh, look into two places now, into the top of the class definition and into the constructor. And what happens when, when that class has a private or a parent class? I'm sorry. So I would have to just look into too many places. So that will defeat all the purpose of of just saving you a few keystrokes and um, will just bring so so much problem. And uh, the other one, it looks weird because you you see this into 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 your into your um, into your functions uh, signature. So. Uh, uh, it even weirder because uh, the body of the function is optional, so that is really weird. But yeah. if I would, if if I'm forced to just choose between one of these proposals, I would choose about the automatic pro property initialization. I'm right. not saying that that. I mean, this is the the. Uh, the uh, the uh, less evil, so <laughs> sort of speaking. Well, uh, I think if you don't not to want to use it, just don't use it. But um, yeah, uh, probably for other people that want to use it, this is it will be great. Anyway, moving on with uh, the a next uh, pr proposal, so at at least debate that is going on on the. PHP internals. I, I'm not sure if it, this discussion already ended, but there is a proposal here to somehow rename the get and post variables to form and query because, for instance, when you have a post request, you may also get some get variables. So they thought that uh, the names are not consistent. They should rename them. Well, I don't know if after so many years calling things get and post, it will be of any benefit to replace these names. What do you think, uh, Cesar? It, that makes no sense at all. Like, if it bothers you, well, at the top of your script, just rename them. And, uh, and, and if you want to do that, in the PHP uh, any file in the in the configuration files, you you can just tell it, okay, PHP just prepend these files for every single request or for every time you you execute something, and there you you can just you can just change however those super global functions are named if that really bothers you, but I see, like, imagine people just, just upgrading PHP from, 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 yeah. from whatever version, just for that little stupid change, that makes no sense, makes no sense at all, if you ask me, yeah. I would not know. Yes, right, it's totally unnecessary backwards incompatible change. Uh, because yeah, yeah, every, yeah. everybody got so used to call it get and post, uh, why bother changing it to something else? Uh, 
Well, anyway, this is just a discussion. Uh, I did not follow it to the end, but I think it did, it did not go anywhere. And, uh, okay, now moving on to uh, a topic this time more related with something that uh, was just released uh, in the PHP classes and also JS classes site, which is a new feature that uh, is the actual main reason for the podcast being recorded so late this month. I was trying to finish it uh, in time to cover it in this Hangout sooner rather than later, which is basically the support to, for PHP classes and JS classes to act as composer repositories. So first, for all those that uh, are not aware uh, what is composer, there is this article that was published uh, just now in the the PHP classes blog, which tells you about what is Composer and how to install it and how to install packages with it and some other details of operation. Um, uh, uh, so for those not familiar, basically installer is just a, a, a tool, a PHP script, uh, actually a, uh, a an application that is made of several scripts, but since it is bundled as a far archive, um, it uh, you won't actually see how many files are in there, but th there are many, certainly. It is not a small application. But what matters is that what it does, basically it uh, can access uh, repositories and download and install packages. And uh, one of its main features is that uh, packages that have dependencies, like uh, packages that uh, need other packages, uh, the Composer will uh, uh, actually uh, download both the, the dependent and the dependency packages, and uh, they will be installed both, and uh, you can benefit of its features. Uh, uh, of all the packages that you are included, and they get installed in a, a directory named the vendor inside your project uh, directory. And uh, also, as a consequence of this, especially for PHP, uh, you it automatically generates code for an auto loader that uh, considers all the the classes that were install it. And this is, uh, I think it is a great benefit. Um, Cesar, you, I think, I suppose you have been using Composer for quite a long time. Actually, you were one of uh, uh, several people that suggested that PHP classes also supports Composer. Um, what uh, do, do you, can you add uh, to about the benefits of using Composer besides what I have uh, mentioned? Well, the main benefit is that uh, you, like, before Composer, uh, even if Composer, it might not be the best thing out there, it has a lot of uh, things that could be improved, although they have changed how we think in terms of libraries, like, before that, you would just uh, you will have to install things in different ways. Like every framework did it differently, every project did it differently. So what 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 they have done is basically they provide a universal way of doing that, and that came in hands with the with the auto loading things. Like you. You you just require one file, and then you forget about it. Like you just tell them, uh, I want to uh, use this given class, and you forget about where they are and things like that. And the way how the PHP classes uh, composer works is even better. Of how you would do it manually because uh, it doesn't do any auto loading th uh, uh, magic like any IO at 
runtime to just find where a given file is because it compiles ahead of time a a a list of classes so it's yeah. super efficient it is as efficient as it could possibly go so it's right. it's really great right so just to put this into context so just let uh, let me show yeah, again sure article because uh, it uh, covers all the aspects. Uh, it basically tells you what is Composer, how to install it, and uh, here there are some details that are relevant. It tells you that you can get the Composer from uh, the uh, Composer site, which is getcomposer.org. There are a couple of ways to install it. Actually, one uh, is just uh, the same. Uh, and uh, um, it also uh, uh, executes a script that uh, verifies if your PHP environment has all the extensions, all the, the settings that are necessary to make Composer run correctly. Um, I'm not going through all the details that I mentioned here in this, in this article. This is the article itself has all the details, so those that want to know more will, uh, will can read the article and know more about it. And uh, then it uh, tells you how to install packages, uh, actually PHP classes packages for, with Composer. And um, it tells you about that you need to create a, a Composer.json file and, uh, uh, and um, here it's worth to mention a, a curiosity, it seems that Composer is inspired on Node Package Manager, which is a, 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 an application of Node.js and uh, since it's JavaScript, uh, this explains why practically all configuration files in, used by Composer are in JSON format, which is uh, a way to serialize uh, JavaScript data structures. And um, the basic Composer JSON file just uh, tells you what packages do you need and uh, where you can get them. Um, uh, in the case of PHP classes, uh, there is uh, the, the names of the packages all have, have a prefix named PHP classes because uh, this is one thing uh, useful of of, of, um, of uh, Composer, which is the fact that you can get packages from different repositories, not just PHP classes, not just JS classes. It is also possible to get packages from JS classes, despite they are not. PHP, you can uh, packages can be any type of files, not necessarily PHP. Even when you use Composer, which is basically an application for PHP uh, projects, and um, here you can also specify some version requirements, and then you have uh, the definition of repositories. If you don't have this definition of repositories, there is a default which is to get from a, another repository named packages, which is was is managed, developed and managed by the, the composer developers. And um, in the case here of the example, this JSON file uh, is presented as a sample in the site, at, at PHP classes site, so to get you started. So just to explain what this means, here it's, for instance, it tells you to get how to get the form generation package, which has to have this name. And here below, it tells you uh, what, uh, how to configure, to tell a composer that to get it from the PHP Classes Composer repository. And uh, here, this line below, uh, it just tells to not bother to check packages which is the other uh, repository, uh, uh, because uh, in this case, I, I just need packages from PHP classes. So if you need also packages from packages, uh, you need to remove these lines. Uh, if you just want need packages from PHP classes, it's better to keep this line, because uh, it has certain, a certain overhead to checking all the packages uh, that are available in packages, and it takes a, a bit of time, so uh, just to save you time, you just have this line here in case you do not need any packages from there. And then you just run uh, some uh, some um, uh, 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 a simple command to, to install the packages, 
And later, if you uh, have newer versions of the packages or want to add or remove packages, you can run Composer update. And uh, this is basically all you need to to get you started using Composer. And uh, other than that, uh, there is a, a detail that is probably different uh, from other repositories: is that the fact that uh, PHP classes, at, at least for a good part of the packages requires that the user is somehow authenticated to identify what is the user that is downloading uh, the package. This is a feature of PHP classes uh, from a long time ago uh, because it uh, uses this information of authentication to know which users are using which packages. So when the packages are updated, you get an email uh, from the site unless you don't want to, but uh, for those users that want to, you can get notified that, oh, there is a newer version. You can get it uh, now, so you will benefit from uh, bug, feature, uh, bug fixes or new features. And um, the, the important part here is that, uh, uh, in, by default, uh, Composer would uh, prompt the user to enter a username and a password. The username for uh, this would be your username in PHP classes, but the password is actually a, a different, a different um, uh, password from the actual password that you use to access the site. It's uh, just a, a token uh, that uh, is more secure because if somebody steals your token, you, they will still won't know what is your real pack, uh, password to access the site. So, uh, given this, um, um, uh, the only detail that is worth mentioning here, besides what I mentioned, is that the fa uh, the, uh, if you uh, tend to update or install frequently, uh, it would be a bit tedious to enter your username and password uh, at once. Uh, to avoid this overhead, uh, there was a guy named Stefan uh, uh, Ockdoffer. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, I hope he can excuse me. He is from a company named BitExpert, and they developed a patch to uh, make this uh, authentication configuration more usable. So instead of you entering the username and password manually, you can just define a configuration file to define what is the username and password for all the repositories that require authentication. And this is the sample configuration to uh, specify your username and password for accessing, for installing packages for different repositories. There is, for instance, one for PHP classes if you need it, and another for JS classes if you need it. The username is, are equal in, in, uh, in the different sites because uh, they share the common system of accounts, but the actual passwords are, uh, are, are different because um, uh, the sites are distinct and they keep a uh, different uh, user base uh, with tokens for accessing your Composer rep repositories. But don't worry if uh, you need to go through this uh, again just to read this article. Uh, I'm not um, going to uh, talk much further about this. It's just given a, an idea of what is uh, uh, the same as when you use a composer with a regular uh, other repositories that do not require authentication and what is different. Other than that, one good thing that I was already mentioned here is uh, uh, regarding the 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 um, the, the auto loading of things. Uh, as Cesar mentioned, uh, in case the PHP classes, you 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 have your life simplified because usually you have to configure uh, create a composer JSON file to tell how to, to use what standard of um, of auto loading rules uh, you would need in the case of PHP classes uh, the, the site already knows which are the classes files and it tells composer oh these are the class files and the composer then 
does something magic behind the scenes, which is to read, uh, parse those files and extract the class file name. So uh, it generates a very simple uh, uh, array that is used for uh, uh, configuring the auto loading. And um, on the part of your application, all you need to do is just include this line here in the beginning of your scripts that just say require vendor auto load. And this vendor directory and this auto load uh, script are automatically generated and updated by Composer every time you need to install or update your packages. And then in your application, all you need to do is just create objects uh, referring your classes as usual. You no longer have to go through all the, the process of requiring the, the class uh, files explicitly. So instead of having a bunch of require statements, uh, uh, it's all simplified with the auto-loading feature. Um, and uh, the support for Composer to generate uh, the rules according to whatever is installed in your system. And I think the, this is great. Uh, uh, Cesar, you have been using this for quite a lot. Um, the, I think it's much more productive to do it this way. What do you think? Uh, do what the auto loading or yes, use composer? the way the composer promotes uh, simplification of auto loading. Yes, yes, it does saves you a lot of time. Um, uh, I think it worth mention that uh, they are several kind of auto loading. Uh, there is a PSR0, I believe, that tells you how you should write your classes using namespaces or just plain class names. Right. I, I believe that is a great recommendation to follow, but I don't like things that force you to just do right. things in a certain way. So they support also a class map. So yeah, glad true. they support that. Um, and so that's why you can easily just use any PHP classes and regardless how class are named or into what exactly. folders they actually are, it will work. So that's fantastic. Yes, yeah, so that, that, that's, that's a good point because many, many, many users, I look at classes that are approved in PHP classes uh, every day and the, the greatest part does not use namespaces at all because they do not feel the need to have namespaces. Uh, namespaces are good to avoid collisions of classes that may have the same names, but they are from different packages, probably from different authors. But most of the authors do not have that concern. So forcing the users to follow uh, uh, a, a PHP recommendation for rule for uh, for applying uh, uh, something that they are not uh, want. They, they would need to change their code to uh, starting applying yes. namespaces and probably some of them are using older versions of PHP that do not support uh, um, uh, namespaces probably due to be uh, a bit awkward and discouraging. So I think uh, the, the support of the class map which is the way PHP classes uh, tells Composer where, where are the class files. It's uh, a, a way to please all types of uh, audiences, types of developers, regardless if they use namespaces or not, or if they follow some PSR recommendation or not. Um, yes. I, I, if I'm, I'm not following it uh, accurately, but uh, by the way, uh, it's. I think there is a new recommendation for auto loading uh, uh, from the. They are. They are big several. Group, right? Yeah, they are several uh, recommendation. The PSR four. Yeah, the first and the last one are for auto loaders. I follow the PSR zero. I follow it because I want it. I think everyone should do that, but everyone, they should do it if they wanted to, so right. <laughs> um, uh, I try to read the last recommendation, I don't follow, and quite frankly, I don't care, like when I have one problem with one library and composer, 
I just said, okay, just create me a class map or of this directory, and I forget about it. So I did that in two in two uh, projects that Composer it didn't like how I was loading things, and I said, just forget it. Just create me one class map. And if you think about it, uh, at, uh, runtime, like when you are running production code, that is the best way, actually. Yeah. Because in production code, how likely is that one request will change one library, like one second apart? Is yeah. So why even bother checking? So uh, I right. have to say that that is great to see that PHP classes support Composer. I I would encourage to people to just enable it because I believe they should give permissions, yeah. right? Uh, right. So uh, well, the way it works for now, uh, I, I, I would rather have the people to do it uh, uh, with the conscious of what they are doing. Uh, but uh, I also believe that probably some authors are not yet aware and some users may want to use packages from Composer. So what I plan to do, which is a bit different than what is already uh, detailed in this article, is, is to, if there is one user, one logged user that uh, wants to uh, access the, a package of using Composer, uh, it automatically adds the, the package to the Composer repository. Uh, so um, uh, users will not depend on authors to do it explicitly. It will be added to the repository. This already happens to dependencies. For instance, if you have a class that depends on another and uh, the author of the other class did not add it to the, the Composer repository, the, the 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 site will add it manually and uh, and uh, tell the author that uh, it was added, so it probably come to the site and verify if if everything is okay. And um, uh, the hope is that all authors get educated about the use of uh, package installers, being composer or others, because there are other package installers, not just Composer. Uh, I remember, for instance, there was, since a long time ago, there was the pair uh, package installer, which is more uh, oriented to pair repositories. And uh, there are uh, uh, there are others. And I think, there, I suspect that somebody will also develop new package installers after this, although I think uh, Composer provides a reasonably good solution for, for this. And... Um, well, other yeah, than that, I I remember that I was doing something a couple of couple of probably I, 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 a year ago. Then I stopped. I say that Composer is good enough, and I like to me it's not an an exciting problem to solve. So right. I just stopped doing that. <laughs> well, well, what I think is that probably some people will develop. Um, I would not say forks, but say new package installers that probably are compatible with Composer, but have certain features that for some reason were not added to Composer. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it will be the case, but for instance, um, there was, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, Stefan here um, added uh, support to um, specify the authentication configuration to Composer, but uh, that feature was requested, and uh, the, he actually sent a pull request to to compose a project like three months ago. There was a dialogue, but after the dialogue, there was no no um, follow up on whether the, that feature would be merged or not. So, uh, since that feature that's that needs, uh, it's something that uh, will not please people that need that, that feature and probably uh, that motivates people to develop uh, better uh, uh, installers that yeah. can be composer or something else. Uh, um, but talking about that, now there is uh, uh, something that a composer by default does not handle very well, which is the installation of um, uh, the so-called asset files 
like for which are like for instance JavaScript, CSS, and um, and uh, and uh, images, because um, the way it works, um, packages are installed inside the vendor directory. They have subdirectories inside the vendor directory, and if usually the vendor directory is not inside the, the web document root of a site. So um, uh, after installing, um, there will be the need to somehow move those JavaScript, uh, CSS, and image files to somewhere uh, under the document root that um, uh, is more what the application needs. Uh, currently, this can be addressed with uh, an add-on application, I mean, uh, an add-on package. And uh, I even mentioned this in the, the, the article because it is, uh, it addresses a need that many, many projects have. They also have their own JavaScript packages. They need to go somewhere. And um, the Composer, for now, can, uh, so can be used to solve this problem with an add-on. But it would be better if the, this feature was built in. And um, there is there is a, a, a common configuration to define where the files go, so you do not rely on different uh, extensions, uh, different composer plugins that define use their own um, configuration options to define where the files go. So this is just one example of an, a need that is not yet very well addressed. Uh, hopefully, it will be. Uh, addressed uh, better in the future. For now, it's addressed with plugins, but uh, nothing stops anybody to create a, a, a new package install that addresses this better. And there are many package installers, uh, for instance, for other languages, for, for JavaScript, there are quite a few that I think that could also be used for PHP projects, just like a Composer can be used to install JavaScript files, and JavaScript installers could also be used um, uh, to install PHP files. And uh, j this is just to mention that um, uh, I, when I talked with Stephanie, you mentioned that uh, some people prefer Bower, which is a JavaScript yeah. package installer. I don't Bauer. know if you are, if you are familiar with that. The good thing about Reliant into Bower is that it is sponsored by Twitter somehow, like to Twitter's employees are involved in the project, so they yeah. certainly they do have money, and Twitter uses it. So uh, yes, I use it. And the funny fact about that is because uh, it is written into JavaScript. Uh, you have to install uh, no Bower using an uh, using npm. So. So much irony. You need yeah. another packages installer. <laughs> yeah. Right. There is not a single solution of downloading yeah. a composer far file. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I think uh, it is probably one of the best things that happened um, in the latest uh, times to in the PHP world. Uh, uh, I think this started. Uh, to grow up in 2012, I think, and uh, everybody's, well, not everybody, but lots of people are talking about it, because um, I think the greatest part of the people that use Composer are people that are used to command line, uh, the, to the command line, but still uh, a great part of the, the PHP developers are using Windows. They prefer things more uh, GUI oriented, so I, I think uh, although it's a good thing, um, there are there will be some hurdles uh, in the adoption of uh, Composer or any other kind of command line based installer. Uh, anyway, um, the now that they think of uh, why nobody is doing some web interface for Composer or any related project that actually can work using the PHP server. That yeah, so that could be a, an interesting uh, topic to address, for instance, yeah. by a, a new type of installer or a fork of Composer or an add-on that works well. Because the way it works now, um, Composer can only be called from uh, 
the command line, the shell. And uh, on environments on which the shell is not enabled, that will be a, a, a struggle to install things. Actually, it's not, it will not, struggle is not the word, it will be impossible. And yeah. uh, this uh, probably it would be a problem to, uh, to, to, to the adoption. And uh, well, but it's uh, I agree with you. It's an idea for uh, an uh, yeah. eventual uh, evolution. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, in any case, uh, as I was going to mention, uh, 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 in the PHP Classic site, uh, there I wanted to um, actually um, uh, encourage more authors to do this, so they get up to date and. Uh, on their practices, I think this uh, using installers is a good practice because it solves a lot, lots of problems that you are usually a drag to deal. And um, uh, besides a section on this article on which I tell uh, each author what they need to do to to, to provide packages PHP Cluster repository, uh, uh, I also have. Uh, a topic year below on a, to a talk. Tell them um, uh, that they can earn more uh, reputation and uh, credibility f when they uh, support a composer. Their pa adding their practice to the composer repository uh, uh, intentionally, not just automatically, like the site promotes. Anyway, the site tries to make it even easier to support. Um, uh, packages in, a rep uh, in the Composer repository to add their packages to the Composer repository by cutting uh, a few hurdles. One of uh, those hurdles is the need to define a composer.json file. It's not necessary. Um, usually, you, when you develop a package and uh, we want to put it in some kind of of uh, Composer repository, you need to define your own prod uh, on our package, Composer dot JSON file, the PHP classes site uh, uh, automatically generates all the, the, the definitions that uh, you otherwise you would have to create in the composer.json file. If your package already has a composer.json file, the, 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 the site will read your definitions from there and uh, uh, integrate the, those definitions. If you don't uh, add them, it's not necessary. The, the site uh, will take care of extracting all of them. Metadata and it will actually generate a composer.json file for you, and uh, the, this this is this is useful because all you need to do in the end is just to do a few clicks and add the packages all packages or just a few to the composer repository. And um, another thing that uh, the PHP Classic site tries to solve is the versioning. Every time you do an update. Uh, um, the package version needs to be bumped, uh, or, or otherwise Composer will not know there is a new version. So what the PHP classes does uh, is first checks if your package already has an assigned version number. If it doesn't, it assigns it to 1.0.0. And uh, and then if you add update or remove any files to the package, it automatically up, up, uh, bumps the version by increasing the lower digit of the version. So if you uh, were on 1.0.0, it will become 1.0.1. And uh, if for some reason you you don't like to uh, don't like or, or what is the actual version it ended up with? You can bump it uh, manually by going to the the package uh, editing page and uh, put the correct version number in there. And uh, well, as I mentioned, this all this is to simplify the usage of Composer, so we don't have to go through uh, much much of the effort. So. Uh, Composer already s uh, solves a lot of problems, but in this case, if you publish your packages in the PHP Classes site, it uh, simplifies it even further, so you don't uh, have to think too much on how to do it. And uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the, the site even tries to encourage 
uh, the authors to do it, uh, to add their packages as soon as possible to the repositories, uh, because the site will award reputation points to every package that you add to the the, the composer repository. And uh, this will uh, let you increase in the the ranking of, uh, of uh, authors, uh, class authors, by reputation. So all the points that you have earned so far for all the action, good actions that you did as a class author, you will get extra points for, for this. And uh, as I mentioned in, in the past, um, uh, uh, later you will be able to redeem those points to obtain uh, additional privileges. Uh, but this is this part is not yet implemented. But um, uh, uh, the the idea uh, uh, to to follow up through uh, that route is there. And additionally, one last detail, which is uh, if you have already your PHP classes account linked with uh, your Facebook account or Twitter account, when you up add your packages to the Composer repository. Uh, uh, the site will post in your timeline for you, telling that uh, your packages were headed to the, the Composer repository, so everybody that looks uh, uh, what you are posting in your, uh, in your social networks will eventually notice and come to the site because it will uh, hopefully will get you more credibility and reputation and um, well, the, many things were implemented here to encourage um, the authors uh, to to jump on the composer bandwagon. Uh, 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 Cesar, do you think this will encourage authors, or do you still see any hurdles that uh, will prevent them to adopt composer somehow? I think that. They should. Uh, I believe also that even if they are not using Composer, that whenever, whenever they release a new open source project, they should share it to their Facebook or to their Twitter or to the any yeah. social network. Like uh, the benefit is that uh, you gain visibility, and people when they will hire you. Uh, they would look at those numbers. They might Google your 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 uh, name and what you've done. So that definitely exactly. helps. Plus, now that you give them uh, points, so they can even appear in the in the website in the uh, ranking. So I believe that it is a win-win situation that they should like. They should do it. I mean. Uh, they can lose anything and they can gain a lot of like if I can talk personally like uh, I think that most of the work that I've got so far has been because I've been doing open source and much much part of that open source is at my PHP classes account so I can't say where I'm working or what I'm going to be doing, but when that's official, I'm going to announce and it's a big company and it's just great. So if I can oh, really? give us, yeah, I can give names until it is confirmed, but uh, uh, it's it's just because of open source, like, uh, and gain visibility is, it's, it's, the, it's the it's the way of actually doing it. Um, oh, really? So th that's yeah. a sort of a, a, a something recent that happened, uh, some job offer that you got. Or, uh, well, I don't know uh, if you yeah. can comment. Uh, yeah, it's a huge company. It's not from America. It's from New Zealand, and that's all I can tell. So. <laughs> oh, New Zealand. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. How many companies in New Zealand that are being... I don't know. I don't know. That, that could be so well, excited. I don't know. But you, <laughs> now that you talked about it, but uh, hopefully if you uh, um, uh, actually... Uh, make it. Uh, make it, you, you, you eventually come here and tell us about it, or, or, or is it sure. super secret? No, 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 no. No, and not, not really. 
they are a very open source friendly company, so I wouldn't have any problems of saying anything. So. Okay. Well, uh, well. In that case, good luck for you. I'm certain. I'm sure that you deserve for all <laughs> the you. contributions that uh, you have done. And many, many people follow your work, so they. I'm sure they will be happy to know whatever is the the big secret company that you are talking about. Um, <laughs> well. Uh, anyway, um, just to conclude this topic of Composer, I actually talk a lot about it because I think it is important uh, just to, to mention one last thing that I mentioned in the article. This, the Composer support uh, is one of one the features. Question, one question that, 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 that many authors might be fearing uh, when they enable that. Uh, if somebody downloads one package through Composer, will that boost the the uh, download counts so I can be ranking better. Yes, that's that's uh, the reason why cool. the, 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 the 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 downloads are authenticated. That's the reason why. Actually, so, there are two reasons. One reason I already mentioned, which is uh, the site keeps tracks of users that downloaded it, and uh, once the the the, the site knows which users have downloaded it. When you update your package, it sends an email. So you can this way you can establish a, 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 a network okay. of users of uh, your packages. And the other detail is that uh, uh, it, since it can track the number of downloads that uh, unique users, not installs or uh, views or hits, uh, cool. a, a user may download your package ten times, but in the end, it only counts one time. That's the real measure of reputation that you have, um, and the the site counts the number of unique, distinct users since the beginning of the site that downloaded your package. Uh, it doesn't matter if you download it via the web page or via Composer. It's the same um, um, tracking method. And um, uh, that number of a number of distinct users will appear uh, exactly on your reputation uh, page. I, 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 now that you mention it, uh, let me sh show for whoever never s uh, seen this in practice. Uh, at the top of your page, when you are logged, there is a number here that uh, shows your reputation number, reputation count. And you click, you click there, at me, and it opens a page. It shows a nice animation of how, how many points you've earned recently, and uh, shows your current repetition number. And then there is a log of the actions that you did in the last uh, latest times. One of the actions here is the number of users of your package. Wow! And so. Uh, uh, this number, for instance, uh, this is my profile. In my case, uh, two, 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 264,263 users have downloaded my package so far. These are unique, distinct users. And, um, uh, and, uh, and for you, it will appear a different number, depending on how many users downloaded your packages. And for all users, um, uh, uh, that have published their practice, it's the same. And all this counts to a, a, a one specific type of, of, um, of reputation, which is the class author reputation. So when you click on the class author reputation link, it will detail all your actions as class author. And here you see uh, the, the user of packages and package added to the, the, the installation repository, in this case it's Composer. So all your package years. Uh, one day ago, I added all my packages to the Composer repository, and uh, it's like 30 packages, and uh, it shows uh, uh, all the uh, all, all the points that I earned for that. And you can even go and browse to to the past to see to to see uh, your past uh, actions. Um, if you remove something, uh, discount the points that uh, 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 you earned before. If you add something, uh, you, you earn more points, uh, and so on. Well, this is just uh, an idea uh, uh, of uh, what it means to have reputation in this site. And um, 
Anyway, uh, back to what I was just saying, just to conclude this part related to Composer, Composer was just, support is just one of the features that um, I mentioned uh, that would be developed uh, earlier in June when it was the 14th birthday of PHP Classic site. It was one of the planet features. Uh, uh, the list of features that I list that I had there, um, it was just a tentative list, uh, not necessarily by the correct implementation order. Uh, guessing what is the more important to implement next, is, it's a it's a bit hard. Some things seem to be more urgent than others. Uh, the next thing that I hope to implement is to uh, to implement finally a better navigation of package files for users that go to the site because many users are complaining that they do not like the usability. I confess that they do not like the current usability as it is today uh, because um, nowadays it could be more ajaxy and uh, minimize the number of clicks that users had to go through to navigate through all pages. So that Hopefully, if it all goes well, that will be the next improvement to be done on the site. And uh, most of the, I decided to do that because some people are complaining, so it's important to address that need uh, next. Uh, if anybody has a different o opinion uh, of things that should be implemented next, I'll, I'll also like to, to listen. I don't know if you, Cesar, have... Um, uh, any ideas of things that should be implemented next, uh, which would be more important? Uh, from the top of my head, I do not know. But if I have some, I would just write you an email. I have an advantage that I can send an email to the site owner. <laughs> yeah. Well, anybody can send an email to the site owner. The, the email address <laughs> is in the site. Anyway. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I also like to comment that I, I love criticism. Sometimes people uh, take me wrong because when they ask for something, I explain why it is not implemented. They think that I am against them, which is totally not the, the accurate. Uh, sometimes uh, I have to consider things that probably did not cross their minds, and when they explain them, some people take it personally and be upset. Don't be upset. Uh, uh, um, I appreciate criticism probably more than people making compliments because <laughs> criticism helps the site to move on and things get better. Exactly. Okay, now finally move on to one uh, final section on which you comment on the latest uh, nominees to the Innovation Award and they start first. Let me open the window here. Uh, where is it? Um, too many windows. First, we comment on the latest uh, nominees uh, for the Innovation Award of September in the JS Classes site. Um, I think I miscounted the months in previous uh, editions of the podcast, so let's try to make it correctly this time. So we are going to talk about the nominees of September that were voted in October and then in November yeah. the results come out. So there were like three nominees. Uh, Cesar, which ones would you like to comment this month? Uh, let me see how it's named. It's uh, it's Seg Store, and the class uh, says that it lets you uh, store data securely using some encryption algorithm, which is named AES. Um, if you can, uh, could share the screen with it. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to do that. It's really buggy into my Linux. Can you open the window for me, and I will just. Uh, you uh, cannot share the window. No, it's broken here. Maybe clicking twice. Yeah, the the window may not be minimized. You need to, if it is minimized. Okay, okay let me just make it bigger first. Um, then just switch to share screen. I believe I should choose the desktop, right? 
No, no, it's the other. There should be an individual uh, window for. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see it now. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I open the the uh, readme file. So, uh, I I think this class I think is. You increase the, the font a bit too much. Or other. Okay. Yeah. So basically, what this class does it uh, it basically it lets you put things into the into the client browser. Uh, so you add some state to 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 your web application. So you have to persist everything into the server side. And the problem when you do that is that you cannot trust to your clients through your browsers. People can just change things, they can just break things. So what this class lets you do is, uh, is that you can encrypt before saving. And, and a very good thing that caught my attention is that it lets you do either if you have like like cookies, uh, it lets you just save tiny data if you have cookies. And yeah. if you have like uh, HTML5 support, it lets you save like five megabytes. So I have a lot of usage for this library. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I've been using things like this into production work. I did yeah. it myself. So I would just drop whatever I was using literally and just use this. Yeah. So I think it is really, really useful. Um, yeah. It was, yes. it was written by Jason Gorfin from the States. Uh, so kudos. Kudos and thanks for sharing such a wonderful library. Yeah. Well, on my behalf, I would like to talk about, uh, about uh, the, the other two classes. Who actually, I think we mentioned it in the other month, but uh, now we are trying to put things correctly. And uh, basically, there is uh, one of the components is just to show some rulers and guides on screen, so you can uh, make it look more or less like Photoshop, on which you can put uh, some guides to, to important um, parts of uh, your drawings. In the case, it will put it in your page and um, show those 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 guides. There are some uh, screenshots that here that show it better. Uh, and uh, well, you can see how it how it looks. There's another one, and this is interesting. Um, this one is from uh, Mark Rolich from Armenia, a regular contributor. Actually, he has sent uh, already ten packages, which is great. Uh, even more because four of them were nominated uh, to the Innovation Award, even one won the Innovation Award, so kudos to, to him for the, his contribution. And uh, the, actually the one that won the award for the month uh, was this one. And the other one that I also would like to mention this month is the, the one that is called uh, Element Sort. Uh, which is basically a jQuery plugin that uh, can sort uh, page elements that are inside another element, like for instance a listing uh, that is contained in some container element. And uh, this one is from Shijo Thomas from uh, India, so kudos to, to Shijo. Well, for JavaScript that is all. Uh, now for PHP we have uh, a much more to talk about, but we won't have the time, so we just can comment like a couple of, uh, um, of classes, each one of us. Um, Cesar, which ones would you like to comment? Well, I would choose my own class, but that was so so selfish, so I choose to the, <laughs> like the most. So the first one is named Chaining Functions, that basically it lets you create one one object and you can just put it like uh, to my variables I would like to uh, to to apply this given function then this given function and then this given function so you could just put it 
into a queue and then and then e, then you can execute them. So I think that is really cool. Like I have some usage myself. Um, it was developed by Agustinas Malinas. Ah, it's so hard to pronounce. I'm sorry. He, or I believe it's she. She's from the United Kingdom. Oh, I might be wrong. I'm sorry. Right. That name in Spanish looks like a female name. So I, I'm yeah. sorry if I'm doing something yeah. wrong. <laughs> it's it, that name sounds Greek. Yeah. Oh, the fact is, he's in the UK. Not necessarily was born there, or maybe he's from a family yeah. from a different country. So maybe, yeah. Uh, well, it's hard to tell if it is a he or she, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that it was a, a great work. Yeah, yeah, really good work. Uh, I might use it in the future. And then the other class, it's the uh, I don't know how it's called, so I'm scrolling up. It is called PHP Ubuntu One Backup. Uh, it was shared by Oscar Diaz. So. I know that that he is a male because it's an Spanish name oh, or Latino name. It's he's he's from Brazil, and uh, what this package does basically it lets you put files into into uh, Ubuntu one. Uh, yeah. I see from the source code that it doesn't ask you for any password, so that's something good. Uh, it does the the uh, the OAuth authentication and as an additional, it abstracts you how to make MySQL dumps and how to save them as your backup. So really cool. Right, uh, that's great. Um, and uh, on my behalf, I also like to mention a couple of very interesting classes. Um, unfortunately, uh, there are many more uh, interesting classes this month, but uh, we can just comment a few. Uh, um, let me uh, c uh, comment first about this one called uh, MySQL uh, functions using PDO. Um, basically, uh, the title says it all. Uh, this is a wrapper uh, around PDO that uh, provides uh, a set of functions that are compatible with the MySQL extension. And uh, this class, uh, provided by Aziz uh, Usain from the United States, is interesting because it somehow addresses a need that uh, applications that uh, need uh, the, the original MySQL extension it is being uh, deprecated in the latest versions. Individually, it will be killed for sure, although when the idea of killing the MySQL extension uh, uh, some time ago was announced, I, I wrote an article saying the plot to kill MySQL extension. And people said, oh, no, it's not going to be killed. Yes, it is going to be killed. It's a plot, and it is going to die. So a lot. this is bad, I think, because it will break uh, many many, many applications and it will discourage people to upgrade to newer versions on which MySQL extension will be killed. Uh, but okay, at least uh, this package by Assis provides a, a workaround um, to address uh, that need uh, without having uh, to set people back to older versions on which the MySQL extension is not killed. So I think it's it's a great idea, not just innovative, but also useful. Uh, so kudos for um, for Assis for his um, uh, for his package. The other package that I wanted to mention, this one is by Peter Kao from Hong Kong. Uh, basically, he developed uh, a package that attempts to provide better handling of um, the missing pages in your site. Well, usually uh, requests to missing pages uh, issue the status 404 uh, for in the HTTP request and um, usually there is an error handler that will take care uh, uh, of the, the 
the pages that are missing. And this is where this class enters in action, which is uh, something that uh, it does to try to find pages that match better the, the URI of the request. Probably it was a request that uh, somebody mistyped and uh, missed some letter or some other part of the URL. And um, this uh, class tries to find a better match for the, the current uh, missing URL and redirect to that page. So I think this is a, a great class. Well, uh, with, with this, we practically ended this uh, podcast. It is already a bit uh, long. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Cesar, again for coming um, and uh, help um, talking about uh, the, the PHP topics and also about the new features, uh, specifically the Composer support uh, on PHP classes and also JS classes site. Uh, one thing that I just forget to mention is that uh, uh, the JS classes, the, uh, there will be a new article uh, to uh, hope to help uh, people to figure out to deploy uh, JavaScript packages on using Composer with uh, an additional uh, plugin for Composer to map the files to the right uh, their, uh, directories. And um, so stay tuned to that article that will appear in JS Classes blog. So I don't know if you have any final comments, Cesar? No, that should be all. Uh, uh, you know that if you need a co-host, just let me know. I'll, yeah. I'll be here. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, Ernani was supposed to come again, but uh, for some reason he couldn't. Uh, he's probably very busy with his personal life. Let's not <laughs> push him to to come <laughs> when he can't. And it's always a pleasure to have you here, Cesar, with us. So on my behalf, that's all for now. Bye. Bye-bye.